Hello everyone and welcome to episode 14 of the Adult Game Maker tutorial series in which we will take a look at conditional statements. In the world of game development, controlling the flow of your game is essential and that's where these conditionals come into play. So, condition flow is the art of executing certain code only if specific conditions are met and in Idle Game Maker, you'll use if, else if and else statements to master this concept. So, first up we have the if statement and it's your go-to when you want to execute code if certain conditions are true. It's like telling the program if this condition holds, do this. But, what if you have multiple conditions? conditions to consider. Well, that's where else if shines, and it checks a new condition only if the previous one is false. And this is very, very important. Think of it like having a backup plan, right? You wouldn't use your backup plan if the plan before it has worked. And last but not least, let's meet else. And this trusty statement triggers when all conditions before it are false. Think of it as your last resort code block. Next up, let's talk about what conditions are in more detail. So, conditions are simple checks that can be either true or false. They can also be used with the requirement property, and you can use different symbols and terminology to create these conditions. What do I actually mean by that? Well, in this table that I have made, you can see all the basic forms of conditions, which can either be true or false. Now, I know that this is a lot to take in, and I don't expect you to fully remember all of this information yet, but it's good to at least familiarize yourself with these concepts before getting your hands dirty with using them. And you can use many symbols such as the equal sign, which returns true when two variables are equal to each other. You can also use exclamation mark equals, which is the opposite of this. It returns true when the variables are not equal to each other. Next up, you have your classic comparison symbols such as greater than or less than, but you can also use greater than or equal to and less than or equal to in order to compare two values more precisely. Now for some condition terminology which is unique to either game maker, there is the have x condition which returns true if x is owned and in this case x would need to be something that is well ownable. So for example x would need to be a building, an upgrade or an achievement. And the no x condition works exactly in the same way except that the result is inverted so it returns true when x is not owned. Now let's take a look at a syntax for these conditional statements and as we can see in this image right here we have an on click effect and inside the effect block we have an if statement that checks if some kind of resource is greater than or equal to 50 and if it is yields us some upgrade and if it isn't yields us only five of those resources. Now also notice this extra end that needs to be added when we are using if statement blocks inside effect blocks. In this case we have two ends here and this end right here is actually used to end the effect block itself and this end right here is used to end the if statement block. So important to mention is that if statements are declared inside effects and effect blocks and the if statement blocks require an end to be put where the if statement block ends. Now something very important to remember as well is that you can use the AND keyword to combine conditions together and in this case to check if multiple conditions are true. So as we can see in this snippet of code right here, this code basically checks if you have a special upgrade and cookies are greater than or equal to 1000 and some kind of building is less than 10. And if all of these conditions are true, it executes this code block right here. Otherwise, it executes this one. Now, next up, you can also use the OR keyword to check if one out of multiple conditions is true. So in this snippet of code, it's the exact same as this one, except that we are using the OR keyword. So this code checks if you have some kind of special upgrade or if gold is greater than or equal to 1000 or if building is less than 10, execute this code right here. Otherwise, if none of those conditions are true, not even one, execute this code right here. All right, and now let's just quickly test out what we have learned before continuing any further with a simple example. So let's say you have a button in your game that produces gold, right? Like in here. But let's say the button is stubborn and doesn't want to produce any more if the player has above 10 gold. So this is the code that we have of our game right now and a very very simple way to do what we want to do is to use an if statement that checks if gold is less than or equal to 10 and if so have the button yield as one gold otherwise the button will tell us that it won't produce anything anymore so let's first start by creating an effect block inside the on click effect and you must remember that all effect blocks need to end well with an end next up let's add our if statement which checks if gold is less than or equal to 10 and if so yields us one gold otherwise so else we'll use the toast property for the button to tell us that it will not produce anything anymore so toast i will 
not lose anything anymore all right and you mustn't forget another end to end the if statement block so here we go so this end is to end the if statement block and this end right here is to end the effect block if you don't do this properly the game will not load so make sure to add these ends here so let's save our changes and let's see what happens now well, let's click the button a few times and let's get above 10 gold so now we are at 11 and one, now when we click the button we can see that the button is yelling at us that it will not produce anything anymore so this is a very very simple example of condition flow in an idle game maker game but hopefully you are starting to see how powerful these if statements can be and with that said let's continue learning about the inner workings of these conditional statements next up let's talk a little bit about the order of operations in idle game maker when using if statements so when an if statement returns a value of true the if statement block jumps to its respective end and same thing happens with else if but what do i mean by this you ask well let's take a look at this code which is an example from a few minutes ago but now let's take it apart and analyze exactly what it does and how it does it so first things first we have an on click effect block right here and inside this effect block we have an if statement block which is right here and the first thing that happens when the button is clicked is that we ask the program a question is the resource greater than or equal to 50 so this condition right here and if yes it will grant us an upgrade and if not it will yield us five of that resource however the important part comes right here and that is to realize that these two events cannot happen at the same time so this event and this event cannot happen at the same time at least in the example provided here and this is what i actually mean by the if statement block jumping to its respective end if it returns a true or false value you can see that now it jumps to the end and here it jumps to the end as well. So if we were to, you know, somehow symbolize this in this code right here, if this returns a true value, right? So if it does yield you some kind of upgrade, it immediately skips over the else statement and jumps into this end right here. All right, so hopefully that made sense. And let's now talk a little bit more about where to actually put this pesky end right here. So as mentioned previously, if statement blocks require an end to be put where the if statement block ends. However, remember that if statement blocks can also be nested inside of each other. All right, so in this example, you don't need to know exactly what the code does since it is a bit more advanced, but just notice the placement of the ends. So this end right here is used to end the effect block. The end above it is used to end the if statement block one. And this end right here is actually used to end if statement block two, which is nested inside if statement block one. Now knowing where to place the end in your code can sometimes be tricky as the game will not warn you if it is in the incorrect place. Your game can load, but the if statements can produce incorrect and confusing results if you don't place the ends in their correct place. All right, so now I'll just show you what the code mentioned actually does, but if you don't care about it, then feel free to skip to the next section of the video. So the code is actually attached to an upgrade, in this case called timer upgrade, which when bought starts producing five gold per second. However, as soon as the gold in your bank is above 1000, it starts to produce 10 gold every second and then as a bonus it produces 1000 gold every three seconds all right so i just thought that was really cool and wanted to show it to you but anyways let's now continue so now let's just talk about the important stuff of these conditional statements so keep in mind that buildings multiply their yield by their amount and this is important because when you can create timers with buildings using if statements make sure to not give the player an option to buy more of them because that will mess up your timing a lot next up when an else if statements can returns true it doesn't trigger any other else's below it and instead jumps to its respective end so this is what i have shown you a few minutes ago basically is the same thing that happens with the if statement and next up it's also important to mention that if statements can also be used with custom effects which is really really cool and last but not least if statements can also be in one line in which case they don't need an end to be added so here we have three examples of very very simple if statements and you can see that they are in one line which means they do not need an end to be added all right and that should be pretty much everything about conditional statements 
Now let's move on to the optional challenge. So your tasks for this challenge are as follows. Add a new building to the game, the cost and the name and the description can be whatever you want. However, your main task is to have it yield 20 coins if the player has an even number of the building, otherwise have it yield 10 coins. And for this, you will need to use the modulo operator, which if you aren't familiar with programming, you probably never heard of this operator before. So don't worry if you get the challenge wrong. However, I still urge you to pause the video and give it a try. And if you get stuck, I have a hint prepared for you, which should hopefully get you halfway through the challenge and what the modulo operator actually does is it returns the remainder after dividing x by y so pause the video and give the challenge a try all right if you are stuck here's your hint so when x divided by 2 returns a remainder of 0 that means x has been cleanly divided by 2 and is even all right hopefully you gave that a go let me know how it went in the comments and now i will show you how to complete this challenge myself all right simon so pays been right now and we need to add a building so let's just create a new building in the building section i will name it coin tree or coin trees give them a name as well coin tree or coin trees and next up let's give them a description we have a description however let's tell the player that these trees are going to be producing double the amount of coins if you own an even number of them so these trees love being in pairs and grow double the coins when you own an even number of them next let's add some kind of cost to these trees for example it doesn't really matter right now since we are going to be balancing the game later anyways however we can make them just cost 300 coins and let's give them a requirement of I suppose 300 coins as well again it doesn't really matter at this point because we are going to be changing this later okay next up is the most important part and that is the on tick effect in which we will need to add the if statement so first of all let's create the on tick effect block so here we go and let's add a preemptive end so we know that this effect block will end next up let's add our if statement so again for this we're going to be using the modulo operator so if the amount of our coin trees divided by two returns a remainder of zero that means the amount of coin trees is even which means we can have it yield us 20 coins otherwise they are not even which means they should be yield us only 10 coins and of course you must not forget the end here to end the if statement block remember this end right here is to end the if statement block and this end right here is to end the effect block right so let's save our changes and let's see what happens in our game okay so i'm in our game right now and we can see that our coin trees have appeared here so when i buy one of them they should be only producing 10 coins so right now when i buy this coin tree our production should be only 25 however after i buy this one it should increase by 40 because we're gonna have two of them which are gonna be producing 20 coins which means 40 coins per second so so after I have two, our production will be 55 per second. And now after I buy three of them, it will once again be lower then four, once again be higher. We can see that it works very, very nicely. And I think this is actually a very interesting idea for a building in an idle game, right? It has a lot of strategy to the game and forces the player to actually kind of think about what they are buying. All right. Now, one more thing you might have noticed is that the descriptions in our game are actually rather vague. Oh, here we go. We got a shiny. Nice. Let's click it. And we got a lot of cash. All right. Anyways. So as I was saying, the descriptions in our game are rather vague and they don't tell us much about what the buildings or upgrades in our game are actually doing, right? You can see that these descriptions are very ugly as well. This is why in the next episode we will cover text effects and how you can use them to really elevate your descriptions to the next level and have them show you a ton of useful information. Alright, and that should be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you really, really like what I do here, feel free to check out my Patreon, link in the description it would make me really really happy but with that said once again thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one